All right, here we are at day number seven. Slowly, I have not enough fingers. If we reach more than 10 episodes of the Daily Nine, your show for digital transformation in procurement and finance with a hands-on approach using the great software tool Nine. And we proceed with our series of episodes about how to replace and automate Excel. Today, we're going to cover the count A formula. Okay, here comes the intro. And here we are live on YouTube on our sweet little channel. Not sure if anybody is watching at all, but let me just quickly show you what we are going to build today. Let's hop over to the screen. It's just a small virtual jump. And here we are, oh, just a moment. Huh? Yes, you're right. We're building an empty workflow. No, that's of course not right. That's the wrong one. This is the right one. And as always, you can download this workflow for Nime over at the Procurement Zen homepage. The link is in the description down below. Down below there somewhere under procurementzen.com slash the daily nine. So this is once again a workflow where we will have multiple nodes to do the task that just one formula in Excel does. So why the hell should you do that? Well, it has one big advantage over good old Excel, and that is automation, my friends. That's the key word here. We can automate this stuff. We do the work once, we build a workflow like this that you can see on the screen here, and then we can let it run automatically. All right, so you see here, once again, we have an Excel reader, a good old friend to import our base file. Then we will have the good old if then replacement, the rule engine, but this time only with one expression where we label demands that are greater than 100K as a strategic PO. Nothing else here, and we come to that in a second. After that, we have a row filter with a special twist. And finally, we have a group by and I've executed that. Well, let's see. That's how it goes. And our good old friends from advertising, as you can see here below, they always have the biggest demands and they're always the craziest people, right? So shall we build this? I would say yes, we should. So let's do it from the get go. All right, we take, as always, our good old friend, the Excel reader, to import the base file that come out of our reporting systems, our trusted SAPs or whatnot. And we label it with F2, call it import a base file. Boom, here we go. Right click, configure to open the configuration window. Once again, as always, the data is within the workflow. So we say relative to current workflow. All right, and we click browse because Nime asks us to specify a file. And the one we want to have is this one here. And as we can see, as always, Nime already gives us a little preview. It reads in the files in the perfect format, everything, the right data types. We have numbers, we have text, we have dates. Everything looks like it should. We execute with F7. And here we have the data in our trusted analytics platform. Okay, the very next thing we're going to do is to apply the rule engine. We go into the node repository here, or maybe we do it a little bit different way today. So let's just, where can we find it? Let's see, table, I'm not 100. Quite honestly, I still don't know. I always use the search bar here, so I don't know where the rule engine is. It's a little bit, it's a little bit, well, it makes you maybe laugh. Yeah, I'm sorry, but you know, everybody has their trusted processes. So the rule engine, you find it under manipulation, row rule engine. And there is, once this Excel reader is still selected, you see it as with the little black border here. We double click rule engine, which adds it automatically to a lovely little workflow. We, no, we don't want help. We don't need help here. Huh? Or maybe we need some drugs or something. I don't know. So press F2. And we say specify or 
yeah, specify, no, not specify, classify strategic demands. Boom. Let's just make this fat and bold and everything. So how do we do that? First of all, we get rid of all that gibberish here. And then we say, well, our PO value, of course, the threshold as always makes it a strategic demand that we say it's greater than or equal to 100,000. A little arrow here, which makes it strategic PO. You see why we don't have any additional rules in here in a second, because it serves our purpose and our example so well, all right? So, we call the column demand class, just like yesterday. And by the way, if you didn't see yesterday's episode, go back to that channel and click that episode. It's very worth watching it. I can tell you, although I'm a little bit biased, maybe. So let's execute. And if we open the classified values, we see these little red question marks here. And these little red question marks are actually something very special in Nine. Little red question marks always are missing values. It's very important that you understand the concept of missing values because they are not null, they are not zero, they are not empty, they are missing values. So that's very important because you can do a lot of crazy stuff with missing values. So let's have, just hop back to the screen and do some crazy data analytics stuff with missing values. All right, here we are again. So the very next thing to, we want to do is the same than yesterday. We use a row filter. Double click to add it. F2 to label it. Mm, how do we call it? Let's just think about it for a moment. Focus on, no, that sounds strange. Exclude non-strategic. That's what every buyer wants to do, right? We want to exclude the non-strategic stuff. All right, double click here. And now we do, in, so far, we have always done inclusion. But now we are going to do exclusion. And what do we want to exclude? Well, all the missing values because they're not strategic and we're strategic procurement people, of course. Hey, come on. So exclude. And then we say only missing values match. All right. And that's it already. No pattern, no range checking, no nothing. We take the column to test as the demand class and only missing values. That should leave us only with the strategic POs. And we as strategic buyers only want to focus on strategic POs, of course. That's why we click OK here, press F7 on our keyboard, and let's have a look at the results table. Right click, clicking on filtered. Yes, only purchase orders with volumes greater than 100,000. So only strategic stuff. Great, we got rid of all that unstrategic shit. I'm sorry. All right, that's, e that's how easy it is when you deal with data. Oh, and just a moment, it looks like my camera lens is a little bit, oh, I need to clean it up. I'm not sure why it's not focused. Mm, if I go no near here, I don't know what the technique does here. Maybe it should serve me, but somehow it, it I don't know. It's globalist. Yeah, whatever. Now it's sharp again. Ha, you see, I just have to have one of these little memes in and then it's getting sharp again. So where were we? Row filter, we excluded the missing ones. And now we do our trusted group by node. And as always, I don't want it because there is no space in between and no space after. And here's our group by node. We drag and drop it onto the workflow canvas, put it into the right position and connect these two little yellow buddies here. Double click and we want to, hmm, let's see. I think we want it to group by the cost center. And we want to have an aggregation of the PO values. First, we want to have count because we want to replace count A and count is the major aggregation method in this video. But of course, we also want to have a sum here. So let's do a sum as well. All right. And as always, if we're doing the same column more than once, we can't keep the original names. Let's see what happens if we do. Boom, it says there's an arrow. It says, well, it's globalist. 
right? I don't think so. And now let's say column name and the aggregation methods in brackets. And that's what we do now. We just press F2 to label it. We call it group by cost center PDO and count. Here we are. And now just execute it. And what can we find? Once again, our trusted friends from advertising have their highest PBO, and of course they're worth it because they are so creative. I mean, come on, everybody loves advertising, don't you? All right, and basically, my friends, that's it for today. That's how you do something like count A in Excel, but in nine with the big advantage of automating it. So if you like this kind of stuff, I would say click like and subscribe so you don't miss tomorrow's episode where we will have another amazing episode of the Daily Nine. See you tomorrow!